Today we are at Chatham Historical Dockyard for Radwood 2024. He's got cars from the early 80s right through to the late 90s. Great examples from all the marks we know and love. So, without any further ado, let's stop chatting and get walking and go around and see what the show has to offer us today. Many of you will already know what this is. This is a Jag XJ6. This is being the 4.3 litre inline six. And this is a Sovereign, which in Jaguar terms means impeccable spec. This is gorgeous red over gray interior with a matching gray pinstripe. It's absolutely lovely. This is specced to the walls with wood on the interior and plenty of space in the back seat for your executive occupants. Does it really get more classy than this? Well, let's have a look around and see if we can find anything to top it, shall we? Now, speaking of executive saloons, Ford Granada Mark III. It's about as plentiful as they come, isn't it? The famed fleet car, which would have chauffeured, or rather been driven by, a lot of mid-level executives in the late 80s and early 90s. This one is, as a good friend of the channel, Mr. Whedon might say, resplendent. Absolutely gorgeous. It has been kept wonderfully, obviously well-loved and well-used, but still, it looks great. With This one has the cloth interior, standard automatic, nice and simple, nice and comfortable, good on a long trip. I'd say this one's a winner. This glorious piece of kit is a Volkswagen Corrado. Now this is the 16 valve, though not the spiciest one they made, that prize goes to the VR6. But Volkswagen in the late 80s, 1989, they saw the need in the market for two plus twos and sporty coupes. Now they didn't quite want to develop a ground up brand new design. So what they did was they took the Mark II Golf and they handed it over to coach Bill Carmen. Now, you may have heard of them from, you know, Cars of the Past, Volkswagen back catalogue, but this came out looking almost nothing like the Mark II. It was sleek, it was rounded, it was wider, it had lovely brand new wheels on it, and it was just absolutely tech packed, especially for the time. Granted, it wasn't the cheapest when it came out, but for something that looked this special and was this performant, this was a true super two plus two for the time with active aerodynamics to keep it stuck to the ground. The wheel, there's a little rear wing that would deploy at certain speeds on, to keep this thing planted and stable on the Autobahn. For me, this really exemplifies the packing of tech and early tech at that into 1990s and late 80s sports cars. And I think that is what Radwood is all about. Damn. We are in the presence of a massive submarine. That lot is actually completely emptied out. You can see it completely under it. I'll have to get some shots of it later. But the main thing we're here to see is the show and shine. Now, first things first, I'm obviously a little bit biased here, but check this out. Nice, early, Alpine white. E30 M3. Can you really go wrong with that? Not in my mind, at least. This one is absolutely spotless. We're talking paint, gorgeous. Engine bay, I've told, is even better. And the inside, lovely beige leather. Cannot really go wrong, can you? Gorgeous wheels as well. Uh, just, I've already been shown up. It, it's, it's ridiculous. But show and shine continues with this. A Vauxhall Cavalier GSI in bright, bright white, just like that M3. Here we've got a Lotus Esprit S4, not quite the V8, but still plenty quick enough for me. Moving on, we've got a Mark II Granada, a lot like the Mark III we saw earlier on. Another Ford Orion over here. This one is something special, come over here. This is an E21, much like what I was considering before I got my E30. But this one has a small block Chevy in it and massive drag radials on the back, thicker than, thicker than I, I dare to fit on my car. 
Here's something that's got a lot of fans about it. Two DeLoreans. This one is chock full of Back to the Future swag and they are just pure icons of the 1980s. Stainless steel paneling all over, hideously underpowered, but still a hell of a looker. A hell of a looker indeed. Moving on over there, we've got a Stager, we've got two Alpina B3s, an E28, which looks like it's just come out of some sort of biohazard zone, and many others. The show continues, and there is a lot of show to see. Well, they always say what wins on Sunday sells on Monday and Audi took it to the absolute max with this. The Audi S2, one of the earliest fast four-wheel drive Audis based on the B4 platform, same as the Audi 80, and it cashed in on the wild success of the Audi S2 famed Group B rally car that brought four-wheel drive to rally and absolutely demolished the competition. This one is on some lovely lightweight BBS 17-inch wheels and is absolutely gorgeous in this blue. Truly wonderful. We had the VR6, which brought a lot of tech, and this just caught sign and went at it with pure brute force. All-wheel drive, brilliant. You can see inside as well, there's a little central diff control, just to remind you that if you really want to, you can send most of the power to the rear and stick the end out. What a wonderful bit of tech, and what a wonderful bit of kit. Here's something special. Now, if you've been keeping an eye on perhaps the Up and Down channel, or maybe even some of our own social channels, you may know that we've got something rather special planned for a one, well, not a 190E, but a W124 nonetheless. This 190E is absolutely wonderful. Take a look at this one. 190E famed homologation special, especially for the Evo 2 and the Cosworth collaborations. And yet this one is decidedly executive spec. Dark blue exterior, near Concorde condition, beautiful leather interior with the automatic transmission and a lovely spec sheet in the window, complete with all the different leather and upholstery colors that you could have gotten at the time. Now, this particular has some great examples of that 80s and 90s tech infusion. Namely, this here mono wiper. Now, many of you already know about the 124 mono wiper, but it was done because, well, they could. It was a hell of a lot more complicated than the two wiper system, but one wiper would sweep the entire screen and extend to fit into the corners and fit more of a square aspect ratio. Another funny example of Mercedes being Mercedes, uneven wing mirrors. Now, obviously in the 80s and 90s, you'll know that mirrors weren't quite convex yet, so your blind spot was a little more of an issue even than it is today, even if it was more of a glass house with all these thin pillars. You had a wider driver's side mirror so, so you could see more into your blind spot and more you know, over into the next lane over if you're on the motorway, and a slightly stubbier passenger side mirror because you already knew that being further away from the mirror you would have a wider view. Just silly little things like that are what make these 80s and 90s cars so special to me. So, that about does it for Radwood 2024. It's been a wonderful show with a great turnout. Weather is just about holding out, so I really cannot complain. We've had everything from Mercs to BMs to Porsches to even a wonderful C4 Corvette complete with chrome salad shooters. This has been truly lovely. Now, thank you, dear viewer, for watching. Thank you for joining me. If you're not subscribed, which there's a high percentage chance that you might not be, do have a good subscribe. Give this video a like if you'd like to see more like this in the future, and we will be seeing you very soon indeed. Show and sign, show and sign. <laughs>